What's up guys, it's time for another quick look at a client build that I did uh, probably about a week ago for a guy named Matt. Now Matt reached out to me because he is actually a friend of Mark and Mark has a special place in my heart because the video that I did on his system is absolutely terrible and as I look back on it now, almost unprofessional as the video was. Uh, it was one of the first ones that went live on my channel it still to this day is one of the higher viewed videos that I have. I'm not entirely sure why. Every once in a while I'll get a, a question or a comment pop up on that video and I kind of look back at it and I'm, I say to myself, man, I can't believe people are still searching for this video and still wanting to watch this content because the video itself is uh, very basic, very almost amateurish in the way it was done. I shot it on my cell phone. Uh, I commented on it using um, like a little Sony lav mic that was like 20 bucks. Uh, but still, that video uh, and uh, the, that build has a special place in my heart because it helped launch this channel. Uh, but Matt is a friend of Mark's. They play games together. Uh, he approached me with a slightly larger budget uh, than Mark had, allowed us to do a few things. Uh, we went with a uh, tempered glass panel from Inwin, the Inwin 303, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. Uh, we also went with a Ryzen build with a GTX 1080, uh, and I think that the build came out great. I did want to just share a few things with you, a few details before we got into some of the B-roll shots, because as you guys know with client builds, I don't necessarily go into a huge amount of detail as far as you know performance numbers, the build process, stuff like that. That's more kind of a, a showcase actually. But let, let me roll this intro real quick. Go ahead, do it, roll the intro. Okay, so let's just briefly touch on the case itself. The Inwin 303 is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I, I've been wanting to build in this case for a while and this project obviously afforded me the opportunity to do that. Stuff from Inwin is always really innovative, really different. Uh, and actually after I posted something about this build on Twitter, Inwin reached out to me and um, they're interested in having me take a look at some of their upcoming products. So I hope to get some Inwin content on this channel. I haven't had any in the past. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But as far as this build itself, the 303 with a tempered glass side panel actually has a really different locking mechanism for the door. Uh, there's like a latch you push down on at the top and the door kind of hinges off the bottom, but there's no, it doesn't fasten to the bottom. It just kind of uh, is sitting in almost like a slot. So the removal mechanism for the side panel door is one of the easiest things that I've ever worked with. And when it's in place uh, and it is fully latched up, it's very secure. So. Uh, props to Inwin for coming up with this kind of a, a solution. Uh, it leaves the case without any kind of a need for a border around the window or anything like that. So it's just a tempered glass pane. So the, the uh, left side of the case looks really great. Uh, and then the right side of the case, the fastening mechanism are two screws at the top that mu perform much the same function as the latch on the other side, where if you unscrew them, uh, the, the, the screws stay in the door and then the bottom pivots out and then you lift the case off. So really slick implementation of hinging and fastening on this case as far as the side panels go by Inwin. Uh, and also innovative placement of the fans. So you guys will see, uh, maybe, maybe you know, but uh, the fans go, and any radiator you might wanna put on, go facing the left side panel of the case. There's three, this spot for up to 320 millimeter fans, um, or maybe 140s. I'll have to, I'll clarify that. I'll clarify that right here. But the fans go facing the left side of the case. So in order to take advantage of this space, I had to fill it with something that would be uh, appealing to look at. So we went with, with some, uh, some Corsair SP120 RGB fans. Everything came together looking really good. A couple of issues that I had with this build, specifically with the case, was that the cable management was a little iffy. The case is made, it almost looks like there were some decisions made in the build of this case, in the design of this case. They were made more for artistic reasons than for function reasons. 
the cable routing uh, for like front panel stuff at the bottom of the chassis is non-existent. The motherboard actually goes all the way down to the bottom pane, the bottom plate, bottom panel, that's probably the word, uh, of the chassis and there's no place to run the cables around from the bottom. So the only option you have is to run them from the side. And let me just put up a quick shot of B-roll here so you know what I'm talking about. What I tried to do was actually group the cables together in, in, in such an order that the cables that had the shortest run distance were on the inside and the longest were on the outside so that I could make it like a, a proper bend and then bind the cables together um, at the base of the case and use uh, a zip tie uh, to try to keep them from flailing around and to try to keep some kind of an order down there. I think I mostly succeeded in doing this and making it look pretty good. But at the same time, you still are left like a bundle of cables running at the bottom of the chassis, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, also, the cable routing situation in back behind the motherboard tray is only okay. There are actually no uh, cable tie down points, little hooks cut out of the back of the tray, which I really tend to prefer having that. Um, but there, there is plenty of space back there just because the whole top uh, of the of the case is actually where the power supply sits and it's almost like a, the entire width it's like the it's like a, an attic I guess uh, you might want to call it not a basement but like it's moved up to the top of the case and that whole space is just empty uh, there are no uh, hard drive cages up there or anything like that so you have that whole space to use uh, as you see fit what I did was I mounted the fan controllers up there and uh, I pushed some of the wiring up there as well to try to kind of get it out of the way. Um, but overall, the weakest part of this case, and I think the weakest part of the build in general is just the cable management, which for some people is just kind of like, eh, it doesn't matter. Uh, for me, uh, that's something that I've always kind of focused on. So I was a little disappointed that I had to make some compromises there. But other than that, uh, the build itself, uh, I think came out really good. Uh, Matt, uh, it, the, it has been delivered to Matt already. He, I think, is pretty happy with it. He's coming from gaming on a laptop that's like five years old. So clearly he's not playing the most intense games, but we went with a GTX 1080 in this build just in case he decided to step it up. Obviously, as you guys will see, it's an AMD Ryzen system. Uh, it is built on a, 60, a Ryzen 5 1600. Now the combination of the 1600 and the 1080 is not something that you guys might often see just because they're in, I guess, maybe different price tiers. But with the 1080 coming down in price and the performance of the 1600 getting incrementally better every time AMD releases some microcode and support for faster memory and things along those lines, I think that overall this is going to be a really solid choice for people. Uh, because you could get a Ryzen 5 1600 with a really decent Wraith cooler for like 220 bucks or something like that. Sometimes even less. Uh, so versus, and that's versus the, th the, the chip that's in the same price tier from Intel, I guess the 6600K, uh, which is gonna go for 240, 250 bucks. Does not come with a cooler. Uh, and if you want something with similar core count from Intel, you're spending 400 bucks. So I think that over time, as the 1600 uh, matures, this Ryzen platform matures, you're gonna find a lot more gaming systems based on this architecture, and these kinds of processors paired with higher end GPUs because they're, you know, the gaming performance might not be quite up to something like a 7700K or something like that, but man, and it's, it's getting closer by the day. So I don't think that the combination of the two is any, in any way unusual, um, but because we weren't going for SLI or anything like that, we were able to use a B350 board, save some costs there. You guys probably are sick of hearing me talk, so let's just take a look at some footage of the system. I hope you guys like it. Came out great, Matt loves it, and uh, that's about the end. So <laughs> thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, get subscribed to the channel if you're not already, and here's some B-roll.